Welcome to ACC Network Extra College Softball as today 15th ranked Virginia Tech takes on the Syracuse Orange live from Skytop Softball Stadium. Towards the end of the regular season, the stats that everybody knows they have. We're going to get right into it. First pitch, little bunt. Lindsay Hendricks we talked about her on Friday, how she had all the magic going the complete game for the Orange, and she gets an early out against. And now they're well over that with plenty of time to continue to make history. Another long fly, but Angel Hasso ranges over near the warning track and a quick two outs for Lindsay Hendricks. And this is what you're going to see from yeah, Hendricks. She's not. 2 1 count. The senior, 10 bombs on the year. Didn't get all of that one. Olivia Pest charging in in a 1 2 3 inning for the Orange. Bottom of the order, due up when we return. Syracuse lineup with a lot of left handed batters and on a one hop. Freshman nabbing that herself, Michelle Chatfield for the opening out. Virginia Tech is doing kind of what's similar that Syracuse. Another ball in play, long run, and we'll get past the glove of Cameron Fagan. So a hit in the bottom of the first for Angel Hasso, and that's able to be a consistent player in the lineup. Another hard hit into left center and ranging over to make the grab Addie Green to make the second out of the inning and a tough spot for Angel Hasso. In the lineup, also at first base, so every single inning she is working, always trying to be on for her team. She's been red hot on the plate. That one flutters. Angel Hasso tries to swipe second base and does. Nice downward action read to get into scoring position. Anything to try to switch it up and help yourself get the grip. 2-1 pitch also gets away. And now just 60 feet away from scoring, Angel Hasso trying to get first blood for the Orange. If I'm Virginia Tech, I am calling a timeout. Try Home plate, not a normal ball in the dirt that you could block. 3-1 count, high in the air. Madison Knight ranging back. How about a birthday bomb? Her fourth home run in six games. Syracuse setting the tone early, up two to zero. What a way to celebrate turning 20. Madison Knight does it once again on a rise ball up and in. That is the pitch she is going to do the most damage on. Looked like it was going to go out, but it drifted right over in the heart of the plate, and she takes full opportunity of a miss pitch. In a 3-1 count when you've just seen three pitches in a row not even make it to home, still to be aware and ready when you see your pitch. Posner got a barrel at least into the outfield and getting some runs on the scoreboard with the two-run blast and strikeout see you later. So a nice response from Grizzard, but not after Syracuse gets the lead. College softball dreaming of being in the footsteps of these players one day. Stinger's organization in attendance. Corey McMillan in on the hands. Mackenzie Foster ranges over for the first out in the second. This is where Virginia Tech is going to see talent. Back another ball in play. Long throw for Rebecca Clyde and safe. Bang, bang play. Rebecca darting down the line and the first base runner for the Hokies. Chatfield hitting 307, 19 home runs, and doesn't have really a whole lot to look at in that AB. And now two runners aboard. Career, great framer behind the dish as well. Hard hit at Madison Knight, who gets one out. Now a pickle. That's one way to do it. That's a double play. I don't think the players even know on the field. So that'll end the inning. Kelly Breen was waiting for Hendricks. Nobody knows what's going on right now. I thought it was three outs, and I feel very smart that at least I knew that because I would have looked very from the bag. 3-0 count for Foster after the meeting for the Hokies, and easy A-B for Foster. Now some speed on the base pass for Sarah. Of and maybe when to go to the bullpen and get relief. Ball smacked right back up the middle, sliding play for one, and safe, couldn't get the double play, but still the lead runner at second base. Knight was crucial for Syracuse in the bottom of the fifth yesterday to give them the lead. 
the 3 1 home. Another bouncing ball, and now two runners aboard. Two walks this inning. First issued, though, for Grind. Looking for a pitcher to get that strike. Especially for confidence to get that, but the ball squeaks away, and now two runners in scoring position with one out. Bottom of the order getting on base, and now Rebecca Clyde, best in college softball. The third 3 2. Missing high, bases are loaded. Rebecca Clyde is hyped up, and now Madeline Lopez with ducks on the pond. Pess at third, Breen at second, Clyde at first, and 21st RBI of the season for Lopez comes via the walk. And Griffin, that whole time we were talking was as long as Grind was sitting and not throwing a pitch. So while you Umpire saying that she is out. A two innings in, we're seeing a lot of things that I don't think neither of us have quite seen. The 3-1 also misses, and that really hurts if you're accused knowing, well, ball don't lie necessarily in the walk. That's three straight walks issued for. Dean Grind missing her rise ball all day today. Another pitch, and that will end the inning. Syracuse, the door was open, but not. Lots of stoppages, talks about the softballs, reviews, you name it, we had it in the second, and Lindsey Hendricks. And then a backdoor that finishes on the outer half. Ball put into play right at Green, the throw, she pump faked because Madison Knight wasn't on the bag yet. So Syracuse does get an out. They could have turned two. Thrunk. Right on contact, or told to go back. Ball put into play at the top of the order, and an out registered in center field by Angel Hasso against Emma Ritter. Ritter, two at bats, first pitch swinging. And in first base, especially with two outs. Thrunk at first, ball tapped in play. Easy catch for Kelly Breen. Hendricks still now for Lindsey Grind. Rise ball in on the hands, calling things off. Cameron Fagan making the play in shallow seven. And what's an important note to make about the softballs is this is really interesting. As a pitcher, if you get. Grind's pitch, fluttered back on the right side of the infield. Long run, and another play made by Fagan at second. What's different to this season is if you outer half, third base side. Full count pitch home, slapped the other way, but caught on a line. Beck over to make the play and... But also, their biggest fans and supporters with them throughout their entire journey. Saw Cameron Fagan make a few plays in the field, and Madison Knight, Sydney had just mentioned her, making the play for single season in Virginia Tech history. Ball now the other way and ranging over to her right, Hasso makes the play. What impresses me most about the numbers that we just showed is you have three different players in. Right now focusing on this AB, ball looping into left. Kelly Breen makes the play. One, two, three, Lindsey Hendricks is grooving. First, now it's the same six, seven, and eight that were the headlights in the second inning, but nothing to show for it. First pitch swing for Mackenzie Foster, trying to beat it out, but a nice play made by Rose. Opportunity to show the nation what he can do as a head coach, because he worked himself tirelessly as the assistant coach, bringing Missouri to women's college world. Free pass issued. Kelly Breen, second time she has drawn a walk today, and Rebecca Clyde stepping in. Down. She's came in relief and kept Syracuse at those two runs. Hard line drive, but caught at the hot corner by Bree Peck. Four in. Freshman first baseman. High drive, long run, but Olivia Pesson foul territory making the catch. 
It's the first time we've seen a ball to left field, and that is exactly where we've been looking to make throughout the series. The 2-2, Aldridge puts in play. Kelly Breen, the throw in time, and two down for Lindsey Hendricks. Loser if Hendricks continues to be effective. Ball shot back up the middle, but a diving catch by Mackenzie Foster. Ten straight Hokies have went down in order. Lindsey Hendricks, she's feeling good, but two runs, will it be enough? Has a great selective eye at the plate. And the 3-2, put into play, and that will fall. In the gap, all the way to the wall. Madeline Lopez sliding safely. How about a leadoff double for the Orange in the bottom of the fifth? We'll get too deep against her, try to catch it more out front. 70th pitch, called strike three. Oh my. Nevertheless, one and two count. Big spot for Taylor Posner. The leader on the team in RBIs. Fans on a pitch, another strikeout for Grine. And after the to back punch outs, ball put into play for Madison Knight. Ball gets away, low throw by Peck. One run will score. An easy play at third base turns into a throwing error, and Syracuse takes advantage to build their lead to three. Madison Knight, all she can do is smile. As soon as this ball is put in play, Peck threw it so quickly, and granted, I know it was a close play, but if she would have taken one more shuffle step within her throw, she could have made a more accurate throw, and that's a hard play for Chatfield at first base, one that she practices and very well could have had. Peck's fielding percentage, 950 on this season. Ball hit the other way and drops in left. Held up at third is Madison Knight. Opposite field hit for Layla morales Els off the end of the bat. She hasn't missed low really at all today either. Full count pitch, put into play, over the head. One run scores in Madison Knight. Another huge hit, pinch hit opportunity for Vanessa Flores coming up clutch for the Orange offense. For exposes where errors can come back to haunt you. As Syracuse adds another one on the board. This inning would have been in the books, but Syracuse doing it with two outs. And Sydney, you, you mentioned when it was a 2 2 count how Flores stepped out. Underneath has to keep her barrel above. That'll end the side regardless, but are the youngest team in the ACC and to still be as effective as they are. That's a four pitch walk though for Jaeger, so a change of scenery is the first base runner for this team since the third. This could be. Ball put into play, long run, the flip in time. Sprawling effort by Kelly Breen. How about we add that to the highlight pack we just had a second ago. 42 RBIs and a runner aboard in Emma Ritter. Put into play, corkscrew to Breen, steps on it for one, not in time for the inning ending double play. Kelly Breen is everywhere. Her legs in shape to be able to provide her longer outings. Ball put into play off the glove of Hasso. It has been a great day defensively for the Orange, but the first blunder with two outs as the rain comes down and the Hokies score their first run. Syracuse was able to capitalize on Virginia Tech's mistakes. This time, Fagan sits on the off speed. The best person we've seen wait in it. Almost Angel Hasso tries to stab at the ball. With that, it goes off of her glove. Green scores all the way from first. They had to leave Central New York. Ball put into play and up the middle. Corey McMillan coming up clutch, the throw home, not in time, 4-2. McMillan, after a long break, gives the Hokies another run in the sixth. Right here, McMillan powers through an outside pitch, sends it up the middle, and keep in mind, we were just in a rain delay, the grass is wet, Angel Hasso fires it too high, likely it was a wet ball. You can see it's dropped behind the attack until this inning. 3-2 pitch, put into play, ranging back on it. Olivia Pess registers the out. Syracuse gets out of the top of the sixth inning. Kelly Breen has reached in her two previous trips, both of them 
being via the walk. Lemley's 1-1 home. Hit the other way over the head of Fagan and into right field. The headlight in the eight slot of the order for here's Rebecca Clyde on the 2-1. Put into play, Lemley gets off the circle and takes the easy out at first. Lemley takes a quick beat at second. It's huge for a program like this that is chasing so many great things in the postseason. Her 3-0 pitch also misses high, so four pitches and Lopez standing at first. Not a whole lot of damage though with first base unoccupied anyway. Dipped throughout this series, she was above 400. Now in a 1-2 hole, pitch home from Lemley goes to the backstop and both runners will advance 60 feet. This is interesting because you could see Aldridge behind the plate, tipped her glove a little bit. Could have ended the game yesterday and struck out on that back in the second as well. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. Other way, base knock. Angel Hasso, clutch hitting. Going the other way, SU back up three. That is what great hitters do. Angel Hasso, the senior leadership going opposite field. With the infield in, recognizing the pitch away, Lantier will score easy going on contact with one out there, and now Taylor Posner trying to add more runs for the side against some of the best teams in the country. Emily Lemley trying to work the grip on that softball before the delivery on the 0-2. High hit by Taylor Posner, enough room for Green roaming left. She makes the catch. Sacrifice opportunity though, throw at the plate, tag, not applied in time. Madeline Lopez on a dime. Situational hitting again for SU, and the sacrifice fly makes it 6-2. to two. I love the aggressiveness there by Syracuse. And for Green, who's playing in left field, if you could take a step back, allow yourself to have more momentum into this throw because it's such a bang-bang play, you need to take every inch in velocity to your overhead. Win the battle, Lemley, Knight, to number 27s, and It'll be the batter. Bases now loaded for SU and Layla morales Elves. One-two pitch. Put into play, Lemley. Easy throw over. So that will be the end of the sixth inning. Also, to know in Hendrick's mind that her defense has her back behind her. It's a leadoff walk for Jatfield. Fleming. She's only had four at-bats all year. Puts one into play on the first pitch. Coming in hard is Olivia Pest to make the out. And for Fleming to come in and to swing at an inside pitch like that, that is... Ball put into play. Ranging over for it. Now at third, nobody there. Great heads up base running by Blackwell to advance to third. And now there's runners on the corners. For Virginia Tech sends the runner over. Drunk at first. Blackwell there, but the first strikeout of the day for Lindsey Hendricks comes in the top of the seventh. And it is Emma Ritter, the senior veteran, USA top 10 player last season. Ball put into play, Rebecca Clyde, the throw over in Syracuse. The series win over the number 15 team in the country. History in the making for Syracuse. Their first ACC ranked opponent win since 2016. And the very first under head coach Shannon Depking. To campus and took over this Syracuse program. A monumental series for this team on the outside looking in for the postseason. And they just took two out of three in one of the ACC's best.